My name is Malusi Malahlela. Um, I like to think my, uh, of myself as a hybrid. Um, I'm not one thing. I'm an organizer, I'm an artist, um, I'm a cultural producer, uh, I'm a fundraiser, um, and I'm a landlord in a, in a way and a director of an organization. The name of our organization is called Kelegetla Library. Uh, Kelegetla is a petty term, it's my home language. We're from the north, and Kelegetla means it's a call and response. So basically when we do projects, uh, is how the audience responds to our project. Um, so it's sort of once upon a time, it's like once upon a time, um, uh, how, you, uh, how you tell a story in once upon a time. To show that the audience is, is listening, for us in Kelegetla is, is, is we'll, 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 we'll tell a story like the rabbit ran down the hole and then the audience will say Kelegetla. So it's sort of a, a nice call and respond. So the reason to name that organization Kelegetla is basically to serve the community and see how the community responds to us when we put projects into a space. Um, we run a library and around the library we have an after-school program that engages with the history of, of, of the space that we work in. We work in the Draw Hall, it's a heritage site, it was made famous for the 1956 prison trials of South Africa. Uh, Nelson Mandela, Gavin Beck, Walter Sisulu, or some of the people who were arrested at the, um, who were trialed at the Draw Hall during the prison trials. Um, and then they were arrested at Constitution Hill, which is a sister heritage space towards us. So m mostly of our organization is, is based on heritage and how we understand history and then how this history is, is sort of compressed closer to the times that we're living in uh, through art, through music, through cultural production, through all these kind of processes. Cultural spaces are very important. Cultural spaces are sh supposed to be the birthplace of, 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 of teaching, are supposed to be the birthplace of, of free access, especially to people that don't have uh, the money, the resources, or, or the know-how. Uh, so cultural spaces are quite important, especially in communities that need such spaces. Uh, for instance, uh, our space uh, is based at the, in the inner city, in the heart of, of all this, this, this migration of people coming from Africa into 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 Johannesburg, so the inner city is like the first stop for all these people, all these migrants coming to South Africa. So it's quite a, a very, a very culturally rich space, and for us, is 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 basically to create that kind of uh, access to 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 the me to media tools, access to art, access to free thinking, and especially much more important to us is access to voice, because without voice, you'll never know how powerful you are. You'll never know. Uh, what your purpose is in life if you don't actually practice that self inner voice to, to, to express your ideas, your feelings and your motives and your existence in life. So uh, for us cultural spaces is, the, is, a, is, is, in, is imperative that they do exist because without them then we, we left with gentrifications, we left with universities that are way expensive, that are inaccessible, we left with uh, people just roaming around without an idea of what they're doing and especially when when we're supposed to be as human beings to begin with. Cultural spaces provide that space for all kinds of human beings to be sort of integrated, but learning together, growing together, living together, sharing together. So that's, the, that's like the core of, 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 of our belief, why cultural spaces need to exist in such spaces. History is quite important. History comes from one voice. His, history is like one-sided. It's never like a two-sided story. Um, like I said, we work within a heritage space. So it was very important for us. For us is the idea of Mandela being the sole savior of, of, of apartheid is quite ridiculous for us. When, when he was arrested next to other 154 prominent struggle fighters, but they were never put into light as Mandela was. Chris Hani was murdered before, uh, he, could, he could be celebrated. Um, Robert Subuke was uh, died before he could be celebrated. So Mandela was used as a, as, a, as a sort of a blindfold to the community to say, okay, this person saved you guys. And then uh, he was about peace, he was about transformation. So once he got power in 94, it was a matter of everybody must put arms down and deal with the whole situation that we free now. So for us, is, is, 
is we use we use we use that history, we use that art programming and art processes and education to revision that kind of history, revision and understand that kind of history from the visual aesthetic of it to the music aesthetic of it to the even the, the political narrative aesthetic of it and see how we can discuss it through cultural production, through creating posters of, of okay listing other people's names that were part of the revolutionary struggle or listing other texts which was omitted from the struggle. Um, so yeah, for us then is, is to provide parallel narratives to one narrative which was given to us, was force fed to us. And then we use it to define ourselves, define the future of South Africa, define where this political standpoint is going and then, and then how we ourselves can participate and take part in it. We were approached by Medicine Sans Frontiers, Doctors Without Borders. They were running an exhibition at Constitution Hill. Uh, like I said, Constitution Hill is a sister organization to the Draw Hall, our heritage space. Um, and then the exhibition was about uh, in solidarity with, 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 with African migrants in South Africa. Basically teaching the locals why South Africa, why Africans uh, from Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Cameroon, Mozambique, why they travel to South Africa. So understanding their struggles of why they left their original places to, to live in South Africa. Economic migration or basically of war ridden spaces that they have to, is a survival migration to begin with. So they did a whole exhibition around it and then they approached us to do um, um, a youth program around the, the whole exhibition. So for us, we worked with multiple schools. We brought them into the exhibition space. They went through that exhibition, uh, understood the, through the visuals they see, through the text they read, through understanding that process. And then after that, they went into a sort of a staged TV program where, where some of the kids in our after school program were, 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 were forming part of a TV presentation, TV presenter, so they were presenters. So once the kids went through that exhibition, they came into this sort of TV made up room and then they went through these back and forth discussions of why migrants are here, why, should, why we should understand xenophobia happened, and then what was the process and the effect of this xenophobic that happened in South Africa. And they happened twice, which is quite crazy because we never really did discuss this thing. We never really understood it, especially the government. They swept everything under the rug. So for us, working through kids is very much important because they hear this, this vulgar, this, this, this back and forth from their own households where their father, mother hates immigrants and then they themselves take this sort of energy and this anger and then they reflect it to other people. So for us is to make them understand why Africans travel to South Africa to have a better life. So they're not here to take your jobs, they're not here to, to, to um, uh, take your land, they're not here to, to sort of uh, disable you in any way, they're here to to sort of engage with us and seek shelters and then that program was very impactful in how in how it was because especially when when the kids after they will come to you it's like oh wow actually i thought nigerians were the only ones selling drugs in in the in, in South Africa. Oh, I thought Zimbabweans actually were just here to do this and that. But then once they work and discuss all these processes with them, it was quite cool in, in how they actually reflected and understood xenophobia, even though it happened again later, um, later in the years. But I guess we try bit by bit to make, to make the youth understand why such processes happen. That's what I'm saying. It's very political. It's very real. It's very relevant. It's very, it's, it, it's, Art is supposed to reflect things that are happening. So for us, the work that we do is supposed to reflect what is happening in society and how it's understood. So most, most of the time, our programs are around that. And we see, we see how we scaffold that information within the youth that we work with. Um, just related to the previous project that we did, um, the kids in our program will see how we ourselves struggle, fight to make programs happen, to fundraise, to organize. They are there with us exchanging those kind of processes and, and then seeing firsthand how projects are started from the drawing board all the way to implementation, all the way to the outcome. So this Teen Talk program, which was in collaboration with MSF and in this exhibition that they did in Solidarity for Survival with, with, um, with Doctors Without Borders, they themselves initiated this TV program. They say, okay, we want to start a TV, uh, we want to start a TV program where youth discuss and go back and forth with each other, understanding the, the situation and the times. And for them to actually come to us and tell us this, this is the idea that we have, and then 
how can we implement it? So for them, some of them have been with us since 2008, since they were 11 years old until they're 16 years old. So by the time they're 16, already they're initiating programs. All we do is then support the structure, the infrastructure around their ideas, and then again, show them how to source funding, how to source resources, and then how to put them together to make an idea that you had on paper to be executed. Or for instance, some of the kids who come and borrow books in our library, we have artworks which were created in, as part of the programs. They will actually go to the artworks and want to borrow them out as part of the school program that they do in their in their regular curriculum. So you can see already appreciating another another peer sort of sort of a peer to peer education. So when when, an, when a student takes an artwork of which was done by another peer of another same person of their age, is value is, is is they see the value in that artwork and they see the value in how that artwork can be used for their own programs in the schools. So it's quite, it's quite interesting how then the kids will, will be coming to us, will be engaging with us in how they want to initiate their own programs, they want to initiate their own dance um, uh, choreography, they want to do their own films, they want to do their own music recordings, and we just support that infrastructure. So for us, it's when we see the scaffolding of that knowledge and then how it's implemented within the kids. So for us, that reflection process comes with, with the scaffolding of knowledge. Now they know how programs are, programs work, how cultural spaces are very important, and then how then they themselves can teach each other within themselves. So seeing that through that process through over the years is very important for us. And then that's how we see, that's how we reflect and see how the importance of our work is.